Good morning friends. I am Dr. Kishore Nadkarni. I am an andrologist and uh, I have four IVF centers and in the last 20 years we have been practicing infertility and IVF. And today I am going to throw some light on a particular aspect of uh, IVF that deals with male infertility. In male infertility, it is a very common occurrence. 1 percent of the entire population suffers from male infertility and in a tertiary level uh, IVF center like ours, uh, nearly 3 or 4 out of 10 patients that come to us have a significant male factor. In fact, they are azospermics. So, we have this particular category of patients who have either zero sperms or just one to two motile sperms. And this presents a real challenge in clin clinical practice. As you all know that ICSI is the inevitable end point of treatment of male infertility. If there are very low counts, if you are unable to achieve pregnancy naturally, if you are not able to get results with IU, IUI, if you are not able to get fertilizations with IVF, then ICSI is the on only answer intracytoplasmic sperm injection. One single sperm is needed, you have to inject it into the oocyte and you get fertilizations and you get a good embryo and you can get pregnancies. So now the most important thing is to achieve that one elusive sperm. How to get that one elusive sperm? Again, in azospermia we have two categories, obstructive azospermia and non-obstructive azospermia. As you all know, in obstructive azospermia, the testicular volume is normal, the testes are of reasonably good size, the epididymis is normal or turgid and the testicular histopathology is normal and the FSH is normal. All this goes on to create a definition for obstructive azospermia. Now, obstructive azospermia is not a challenge as far as sperm retrieval is concerned. When patients have nil sperms in their ejaculate, you have to remove those sperms from the testes or epididymis. This is called as sperm retrieval techniques. Now, before you do sperm retrieval, in obstructive azospermia, it is not a challenge to sperm retrieval because the retrieval rate is almost 95 to 97 percent. And in most of the cases, we are able to get a good quantity of sperms in the epididymis itself by just putting a needle. We have a 95 to 97 percent success rate of sperm retrieval by putting a needle in the epididymis. That technique is called as a PISA, percutaneous epididymal semen as sperm aspiration. If PISA does not work, then TISA. And if TSA does not work, then a TSI. In any case, the overall retrieval rate in obstructive azospermia, where there are live sperms in the testes, is 95 to 97 percent. The real challenge is non-obstructive azospermia. Now, what is non-obstructive azospermia? In non-obstructive azospermia, also in, in medical language known as hypergonadotropic hypogonadism, in these cases, the, there is a Leydig cell dysfunction. There is a testicular failure. The FSH is raised, markedly raised. There are no sperms in the ejaculate. And the, the FSH, is, FSH is raised and the testosterone levels are on the lower side because of Leydig cell dysfunction. Now, can we get sperms out of these testes? Nobody can really predict whether we can get sperms out of these testes or not. What are the predictive factors? One of the predictive factor is the testicular volume. Now, if the testes are very small sized, less than 10 cc volume, then normal methods of sperm retrieval do not generally yield a positive result. There is a percentage. In 20 percent, it is successful. So, the treatment of choice is a TESI. But when the testicular volume is less than 10 cc, the, the procedure of choice is a micro TESI. But if the testicular volume is more than 10 cc and the testes are reasonably good volume, then you can do a TESI or you can even do a TISA by putting a needle in the testes. So, these are the different uh, methods of uh, retrieving sperms in non-obstructive azospermia from testes of different volumes. But what I want to tell you today is that there is a new medical treatment of testicular failure of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Now abroad, in internationally, in the, some of the best centers in the world like Cornell, like Sandro Estes in Campinos in Brazil, the method is that they do not do the sperm retrieval at the time of the ovum pickup. They do it one to two cycles prior to the ovum pickup. So that if the sperms are not retrieved, then that patient's wife is not subjected to an ovarian stimulation, an unnecessary ovarian stimulation. These are the types of patients who are not willing for donor sperms. But there are two challenges to this uh, hypothesis that you do a pickup in the previous cycle. If you get the sperms, freeze the sperms and then you can do the subsequent stimulation in the subsequent cycles. But if you, and if you don't get the sperms, you tell the patient that, well, uh, we have not got the sperms. So now you either go for a donor donor sperms or you, we do not stimulate you at all and you have to choose other options like third party or adoption or whatever else. But those patients of hypergonadotropic hypogonadism or testicular failure in whom we are going to attempt a sperm retrieval, there is a new medical treatment that is available and that is a medical pretreatment of hypergonadotropic hypogonadism or testicular failure. Now, what is this hypogonad, what is this pretreatment? Now, the premise is that patients with testicular failure have low testosterone levels within their testes. 
Now, as you know, the testosterone metabolism, that it starts from cholesterol, it goes to pregnenolol, then progesterone, and then from progesterone, it goes to androepistenedione, and from androepistenedione, it goes to form testosterone. This testosterone is either free form or bound form. Bound is 70% to globulin and 30% to albumin. Now, that some of this, 30% of this goes to form, go, is to, um, by 5-alpha reductase gets converted to dehydrotestosterone. Now, DHT is the more potent form of testosterone, which is required for erection, ejaculation, and a lot of other uh, functions of testosterone. And the other 70% goes into the aromatase pathway and gets converted to estradiol. Now, this treatment is based on the premise that patients with testicular failure have low intratesticular levels of testosterone. Now, when they have low testosterone levels, how do you diagnose that? That is diagnosed by a simple test, like measuring the total free testosterone and the estradiol levels. So there is something called the T to E ratio, testosterone to estradiol ratio. The normally the estradiol is around 250, 25 to 30 to 40. So if you have testosterone which is less than 300, less than 250, and if the T to E ratio is less than 10, then these are the indications for giving these patients aromatase inhibitors. Now what do these aromatase inhibitors do? These aromatase inhibitors prevent the conversion of testosterone to estradiol and thereby increase the levels of testosterone inside the testes and this in turn sp stimulates spermatogenesis in almost hopeless cases where there are no sperms in the testes. So this is one of the treatments. So T to E ratio is very important. So every patient with very low sperm counts or with azospermia and especially in non-obstructive azospermia where the FSH is raised and the testosterone is low, you should do the estradiol or E2 levels of these patients. And if the T to E ratio is less than 10, then these patients should be subjected to aromatase inhibitor therapy. Now, what is this? What are the, what is aromatase inhibitors? Aromatase inhibitors prevent conversion of testosterone to estradiol and therefore raise the intratesticular levels of testosterone. Though there are two types of aromatase inhibitors available in the market steroidal and non-steroidal. The steroidal test, uh, aromatase inhibitor is testolactone and the dose is 50 to 100 milligrams per day depending on body weight. Now, testolactone is not available in India. And you have three aromatase inhibitors, non-steroidal. And there are three types available in the market. One of them is anestrozole. The second one is letrozole. And the third one is tamoxifen. Now, out of these three, letrozole has the least toxicity and is the most easily available now that it has come back into the market. So, what does letrozole do and what is its dose? The dose of rec letrozole recommended in these patients is 2.5 milligrams daily. And if the patient's weight is more than 90 kgs, we give them 5 milligrams of letrozole daily for 2 to 3 months. 60 days is the normal time this treatment is recommended. In this case, it is stimulate 2.5 milligrams, one tablet daily for 60 days. And after 60 days, if the T levels are less than 300, we can add to this gonadotropin therapy. That is HCG injections, 2000 international units, three times a week for one month. If you give this treatment, there is a very good improved chance of sperm retrieval. Now, this is, this is, this is in the literature for the last almost eight to nine years. I first heard this in the London X-ray in 2013 from the Cornell University, the Oliver Golds, the Goldstein group who, who presented this information there. Then in the subsequent ASRM also in Boston, this was discussed at length. Almost one and a half hours were, were, was devoted to role of aromatase inhibitors and gonadotropins in treating non-obstructive azospermia. And there is mounting evidence in the literature. You have Raman and Schelgel who evaluated the effects of anestrozole and letrozole uh, a selective aromatase inhibitors on semen parameters in, of infertile men with T to E ratio of less than 10. Now, they found that almost in 50% of the cases, they were able to get improved semen parameters, improved testosterone levels and reversal of the T to E ratio, which then subsequently came about 10. And these people all had sperms. Some of them, in fact, about 7 to 10% of them had sperms in their ejaculate. The remaining patients had sperms in the, developed sperms in the testes which could be retrieved. So retrieval came positive. Now this again largely depends on the testicular histopathology. All cases are not going to be successful. You won't get success in all cases because it depends. Now they have found that in, in testicular failure where the testes are low volume, where there is a testicular pathology, where the FSH is markedly raised, where the testes are damaged, destroyed, torsioned or whatever else, they're subjected to testicular failure. Those patients have different histopathological pictures within their testes. 
And what are the different histo histopathological features in the testes? It could be a normal his testicular histopathology, which means all the layers of spermatogenesis are so seen within one germinal follicle with mature sperms in the lumen of this. That is one picture. The second picture is called as maturation arrest. And you have two types of maturation arrest. One is early at the spermat spermatocyte level and the second is late at the spermatid level. So you can get early maturation arrest and you can get late maturation arrest. There is a third picture that comes and that is called as Sertoli cell only syndrome. That is total absence of germinal epithelium or germinal aplasia. In Sertoli cell syndrome, there is total absence. There is no germinal epithelium at all. These patients are not, is a very bad prognosis. They are not going to give you sperms. And the last picture is called as tubular atrophy or tubular fibrosis or hyalinization, which is also comes under the category of hypospermatogenesis, which could be focal or diffuse. Now, hyposperma now it is found that if the patient has a testicular histopathology which shows a late maturation arrest or a hypospermatogenesis, these patients give excellent results with aromatase inhibitors. The retrieval rate is very high. But if the patient has early maturation arrest or if the patient has Sertoli cell only syndrome, then these patients do not give a good response to sperm retrieval do not give a good response to aromatase inhibitor therapy or gonadotropin therapy. Similarly, varicoceles, if you have large varicoceles and you have azospermia, then if the patient has these two pathologies, Sertoli cell only syndrome and early maturation arrest, well, operating the varicocele will not help even if the varicocele is, is, uh, is very large. The vein size is even if it is 4.5, 5 millimeters, still the operation will not give good results. But if the histopathology is Late maturation arrest or hyperspermatogenesis, this category gives a 40 to 45 percent result with even with varicocele ligation and similarly with gonadotropin therapy and similarly with aromatase inhibitor therapy. So now they have found that in testicular failure, it is the testicular histopathology which actually determines the prognosis of any medical or surgical treatment that may be given to these patients. Having said that, today we have microtessy. And in micro is able to identify focal areas of spermatogenesis even in badly damaged testes. Even in FSH which is 40, 50, 60, 70, there may be focal areas of, of uh, spermatogenesis. So this aromatase inhibitor, inhibitor, aromatase inhibitor therapy as a pre-treatment for hypergonadotropic hypogonadism is what I want to tell you about. So I please request you that in all cases of low sperm counts, in all cases of 1 to 2 severe oligospermia, that is 1 to 2 motile sperms, all cases of azospermia, preferably non-obstructive azospermia, where the T is low and the FSH is high, raised more than 20. This is the classical case of testicular failure. I recommend that in all these patients, in addition to doing FSH and testosterone, please do their estradiol levels and find out the T to E ratio. Also do their karyotype and YQ micro deletion because in hopeless cases of testicular failure, if there is a genetic abnormality, if there is a YQ micro deletion or if there is a Klinefelter syndrome, you need to rule out genetic abnormalities. But in all other cases, you should give these patients aromatase inhibitors for 2 to 3 months prior to retrieval. In our country, we do the retrieval normally on the same day that we do the ovum pickup. The reason for this is that we may or may not get sperms on one particular day and we may not get it on another, another particular day. Also, that the fragile sperms which are retrieved from testicular microtessy are actually, they require very careful handling and a very advanced embryological uh, surveillance to keep them alive and to kill. So, when we have a good standard lab, when we have an advanced lab and an excellent embryologist, then we should do the pickup one or two months prior to that. But in, even in these cases, it is recommended that all patients of testicular failure be subjected to where the T2E ratio is less than 10, give them aromatase inhibitors, stimulate 2.5 milligrams, one tablet daily for 60 days, even up to 90 days, and you will find amazing results. There is mounting evidence in the literature to show that giving aromatase inhibitors to patients with uh, testicular failure and non-obstructive azospermia with a T to A E ratio less than 10 gives improved results. There's mounting evidence. You have Raman and Schelgel who have, have extensive studies in the, reported in the literature. And then Cavallini et al, Salem et al, Gregorio et al, all these and of course our own Sandro Steves and the, the Campinos group, the Sao Paulo group, all of them have reported and every year there are um, huge number of publications which support the use of aromatase inhibitors, both anestrozole as well as <coughs> letrozole. Now with easy availability of letrozole and not and an economical price at that, we, I recommend that all cases of testicular failure before retrieval be treated with stimulate
2.5 milligrams one tablet daily for 60 to 90 days and also back it up after 60 days start HCG injections 2000 international units three times a week for one month and you will notice that your retrieval rate will definitely improve. The literature also suggests that not only retrieval rate but in many cases in 5 to 10 percent of the cases there is appearance of sperms in the ejaculate but as I told you there is one catch here that is the testicular histopathology. So now it is now the latest uh, recommendation is that all patients of non-obstructive azospermia should be subjected to a needle biopsy. Get the diagnosis of what the underlying testicular pathology is and then you plan your further treatment. But today a medical treatment is available to improve the chances of sperm retrieval. And of course you have different sperm retrieval te techniques in, including microtessy, which will make it possible for people with badly damaged testes, for people with failing testes, for people with high FSH, for people with low testosterone to st still have sperms retrieved from their testes and they have their own genetic child. Thank you.